大家好，欢迎来到洛杉矶华资讯网的直播现场，我是主播莉亚。近年来呢，儿童近视问题越发严重了，已经成为全球范围内。最重要的健康挑战之一。那近视发生的年龄呢，正在不断提前。很多小孩在五岁、六岁，甚至更小年龄的时候，就已经出现了近视的症状，这对他们的视力健康和未来的生活都带来了非常深远的负面影响。那在上期节目当中，我们探讨了角膜塑形镜，也叫 OK 镜啊，作为一种帮助儿童控制近视的有效方案。那很多家长也非常关注这一项技术，它到底安全吗？它是不是长期有效？因此呢，今天在节目中，我们特别邀请到了。洛杉矶知名儿童近视控制中心高登眼镜 Golden Vision 的权威专家梁医生 Dr. Eric 梁为大家继续深入解读。梁医生呢，在儿童近视管理和角膜塑形镜 OK 镜领域呢，是拥有丰富的临床经验，尤其是在高风险儿童的近视控制方面，累积了大量的成功案例。那今天呢，他将为我们解答关于 OK 镜的科学原理、适用人群是不是安全，以及是否长期有效，帮助家长们更好的保护孩子们的视力。首先，先请梁医生跟我们打个招呼吧。Yeah. Hello, 大家好 Thank you so、uh, so much for joining us today.、Uh, so in our last episode, we discussed how OK can help kids control the myopia development. So first, could you please brief summarize what the technology is? Just a recap. Yeah, of course. So the lens is a specially customized design lens that's made to fit exactly to the shape of the front surface of the eye, the cornea.、Mm -hmm. And the lens is gas permeable and oxygen permeable, so it's safe to wear at night. And when you put the lens on, it actually reshapes the front surface of the eyes and changes the way the light comes into the eye and lands in the back. And that's how it's actually controlling the prescription、mm -hmm. and keeping the eye short. Got it. So the effectiveness and safety of the OK are the major concerns for many parents.、Yeah. So let's start with the efficacy index. So、yeah. how effective it is in controlling the myopia? So most. Ortho K lenses. There's different types, but they can control about 50 percent. So that means we can slow down the progression and the rate of change by 50 percent.、Mm -hmm. But we know we can't stop it completely. So slight changes over time can still happen. But even a rate of of reduction of 50 percent、uh, over a long period of time can really have a really big outcome. Got it. So for example, let's say I develop my myopia like minus one or minus two. Diopter each year, so、mm -hmm. it can slow down fifty percent. That would be. So that means the difference is if you were maybe a high prescription, like a minus six, seven, or eight. You, if you got ortho K done early and reduced it by fifty percent, you only end up being a minus one, two, or three. Okay. So that's a big difference when we look at the risk in increasing. The risk of developing eye diseases later on in the future. Because if you have like severe myopia, it will cause more, like maybe cataracts, early formulation, or the retina detachment, or anything. So I'll give you an example. Yeah.、Okay. Um, the difference between being a high myope, which is about a minus six,、mm -hmm. and having no myopia, is about for retinal detachment is twelve point six times increase. So that's that's through your entire life. Every year that. You're alive. You have that increased risk that you're living with. That's that's very shocking because I feel like minus six is not even considered as a severe myopia for Asian kids. I mean,、yeah. I know people who have minus seventeen diopter or minus thirteen diopter. Yeah, especially、so、in the, Asians, it's very common. Exactly. So the is actually just they're living in the disability. Yeah. So when we look at the eye itself, we define. That eye being minus six is high because the eye is actually longer、mm -hmm. by about two millimeters,、mm -hmm. and the eye is a very complex machine. It's made up of over two million working parts. It's the second most complicated organ in the body,、mm -hmm. and so like any machine, if you put stress on that machine, it doesn't work well, and it's more likely to break down. So those breakdowns is like like I said, retinal detachments, myopic macular degeneration. Those things can take away your vision on in the future, and those risks are forever. Even if you do LASIK, it doesn't solve your problem. So doing LASIK doesn't change the shape of the eye. The eye is still long; it doesn't shorten it. So it's the same thing as once you get tall, you're never going to get short again. Oh! Once that number is a minus six forever, even if you do LASIK and you can see well, you still have a minus six long eye. Got it. I had my the thirteen diopter, which means my eyes. My eyeballs is longer than other people, and it won't go back. And it won't go back. It's it hasn't gone back, even with LASIK. 
Okay. Yeah. That's that's the thing. But uh, yeah. probably I need to like schedule right now a specialist maybe. <laughs> but it, it kind of yeah. like um, it will happen in their future life. So you definitely want to, um, you know, eliminate the risk of that. Yeah. And also, uh, if a child wears like ortho lenses, let's say every day, constantly, will they be able to go out without glasses on the very next day? Yes. Well, I think it. The answer is it depends. For a low prescription, a lot of our patients will be able to see 20-20 by the next day after their first night of wear. Mm -hmm. For higher prescriptions, that can take maybe a week, maybe up to three weeks, depending on the lens. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, if you're wearing the lens consistently, you'll be able to see very well. You'll be able to go to school all day long. You'll be able to see well without having to wear glasses or contacts. Oh, so people when people said, oh, you just wear the ortho lenses and when you sleep and when you wake up, you can see clear. Is that true? It's exactly true. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So many people are concerned about the safety of this treatment. Yeah. Afterwards, you know, it will put in your eye and of it will course. attach your cornea. Of course. So are they safe, especially for young kids? Yeah, so FDA, len FDA approved versions of these lenses ensure that these lenses are both safe and effective. Mm -hmm. So FDA approval means it's gone through rigorous clinical testing, exactly. studies of thousands of kids over many years. Long-term effects have been well understood for 20 or 30 years. So this is not a new technology, but now it's becoming more widely known and people are starting to really um, see it in their kids, see it in their, their, their friend groups and their parent groups. And so it's just becoming more widely known. Mm -hmm. Got it. Will it cause the dry eyes, let's say? So that's one of the common side effects with ortho-K lens wear. Sometimes you can get a little bit of mild irritation when you're wearing the lens. Dry eyes, those are pretty common, but they're pretty mild. And we can counteract them with just using, you know, artificial tears, eye drops during the day. Got it. If, let's say, if, if the kids really feel uncomfortable wearing that, they can stop using it like any time. Yes, exactly. Got it. And um, also, will it cause the, like um, some cornea shape change? And let's say some people have the keratoconus. Can they have ortho K lenses? Um, so, are there any risk for that? Yeah. So there are specific uh, corneal diseases such as keratoconus where we really have to examine w at what stage of keratoconus they're in. For more severe cases, sometimes we don't recommend doing ortho K lenses. If they're at an early stage, sometimes we can recommend something called, called a corneal cross-linking where we strengthen the cornea first and then we can do ortho -K. So it really depends on the case. The most important is to come for a consultation. Exactly. So everybody's eyes are unique and everybody's situation is completely different. So we always need to look at all the different, we have to look at all the different parameters, ethnicity, age, the severity of their prescription, their family preferences, mm -hmm. the pa the child's habits, hygiene. So that's why it's really important to see a myopia management specialist, someone who's experienced in seeing and consulting in all of these different factors to give you the best recommendation. Got it. Uh, how to take care, maintain this, you know, about author K. Yeah, so about that? of course, yeah. hygiene is number one thing, making sure you always clean the lens properly, uh, using, you know, up to, you know, clean solution, things that aren't expired, and then Regular follow-ups. Those we have a strict protocol for a reason. So, we will see you guys uh, for our ortho K patients. We'll see them back every three months at the minimum, and we'll check if there's anything that's changing. If the prescription is changing or if the eye shape is changing, mm -hmm. we'll automatically change the lens out for you. We'll order you a new one to always update and change according to to as your prescription changes. Got it. So. Um so it's important to, to do the follow-up visit. Very important. And also, I have just a question. I didn't know I had myopia um, until I was like six or seven years old. But actually, when I first get a glasses, my first glasses in my life, that was two, minus two diopter, which means yeah. I already got myopia since right. like earlier than that. How do parents know your kid is myopic? So when we look at the development of a normal child, their eye actually starts shorter in the beginning of their life. Mm -hmm. And everybody pretty much starts with almost a plus prescription, which is the opposite of myopia. But as they grow, the eye grows along with them. And as it gets longer, mm -hmm. that it keeps growing past the point where it should stop. Mm -hmm. And so everybody starts with actually n pretty much no myopia. Mm -hmm. So there was a point in your life when you were younger that actually you started with zero. 
And if they had maybe caught it earlier, we can actually slow it down earlier.、Mm -hmm. So you went from a minus one to a minus two to a minus four. By the time they caught it, you were already a minus six. So it basically means that you should be checking your children's eyes for them. You should be proactive about it. So as soon as they can read alphabets or they're going to school, it's really important to check because when you ask a child. Do they see blurry? They don't know. No, what is the blurry? They don't know what that means,、yeah. right? So、uh, it's important for you to get your eyes checked regularly, just like going to the dentist,、mm -hmm. right? You check your eyes, you have to check your teeth, you know, and you only have one set of eyes. Teeth, you actually have two sets.、So. Okay. It's even more important to check your eyes early. Right, got it. Thank you so much. So,、um, in the future, because a lot of people wanted to use orthopedic, they don't want to have a severe myopia first because if they have like severe condition like retina detachment, the risk is just higher. And、yeah. secondly, probably they want to have like more vision correction procedure in the future. And does use like will using orthopedic lenses affect the future vision correction options or limited your option?、Um, for example, if I want to have LASIK or something. So absolutely, it doesn't limit your options. It only expands your options.、Mm -hmm. So having a lower prescription means that you can do all different types of refractive procedures. If you have a high prescription, you're more limited. Sometimes、uh, over a certain number, you sim simply cannot do LASIK because、mm -hmm. then your cornea becomes too thin afterwards.、Mm -hmm. So if anything, doing ortho K will only give you more options in the future. Got it. Will ortho K cause your cornea like thinner or weaker? No. So again, we're not changing anything permanently on the cornea. Everything is completely reversible, and that's shown in all the studies that's been done over the years. That's awesome.、Um, and also, I mean, people wanted to know why. You guys stand out because there's so many providers out there, and they can offer myopia uh, uh, management. Tell me more about the Golden Vision. Yeah, so for Golden Vision, we have across nine practices, over 40 years of experience. We've successfully treated about 10,000 myopia management cases over that time, and so we are、uh, very experienced. And oftentimes, we'll even get referred patients outside from different offices. That the patient wasn't doing well for one reason or another. Usually, it's because they have a very high prescription、mm -hmm. or they have some sort of complication. So we just have a lot of experience both with normal cases as well as complex cases.、Mm -hmm. We have a team of people and experienced doctors and staff that's been doing this for decades now. So we are、uh, committed all to cooperating with each other, and we'll even refer to ophthalmologists when we need to. So we make sure we always have comprehensive care, and、uh, beyond the experience,、um, you know, we just had. We have all the different options, and we've already tried everything that's out there, and so we always have the most up-to-date technology、mm -hmm. and products and services. So we're always with every single lens brand that you can find out there. We we carry it. We're bringing new products and services. Every day as it's coming out, so we can prescribe. Like I said, medication drops. We are starting to work on ophthalmic lenses for this. We're trying to do、um, all of the new FDA-approved versions of all、mm -hmm. these lenses by major brands we carry. So we can give you a more custom, tailor-made plan based on your individual needs. That's awesome. So collectively, you guys have forty years' experience,、um, over ten、uh, k successful cases, and also night locations, which provide Mandarin services. So important for parents nowadays, especially in Chinese community. And also, you guys have the cutting edge technology. I mean,、uh, that's the most important part, right? If you wanted to have the most advanced technology, most thorough examination, and just come to Golden Vision, you will find it. And also, um, 如果大家感兴趣的话，都可以扫描。屏幕上方的二维码。那就像刚刚 Doctor 梁所说的，他们已经有四十年的这样的一个经验了。他们尤其擅长处理那些比较高度近视或者比较复杂的这些的案例啊，甚至呢会有一些其他的同行不会把病人推荐给他们，就是因为能够帮助他们，能够帮助帮助他们客人更好的获得近视的控制。啊、呃，如果大家感兴趣的话，都可以扫描二维码。那除了有四十年经验之外呢，还帮助了一万的这个成功的这个案例。啊、呃，另外呢还有九个诊所的 location， 大家都可以去做 free。Consultation, 而且呢有中文团队为您服务。如果大家感兴趣的话，就搜索谷歌 Map 上面的 Golden Vision， 哪
个 location 离您最近就可以去了。好了，以上的今天节目的全部内容了，或者您可以去扫码，扫码的话中文客服可以提前为您进行预约以及回答更多的详细的消息。我是主播莉亚，感谢 Doctor 梁做客我们的节目，谢谢，我们下期节目不见不散。谢谢